timing advance. So I I think most I think some people understand timing advance, but do you want to explain it? Awesome recording now, by the way. The timing advance, well it's uh this basically when a, a zero cross is detected, um you're trying to get the commutation timing to be aligned in a fairly uh, good spot to provide a decent amount of torque and also to be just in the right the right place at the right time. The magnetic field can advance as the motor uh, RPM increases. So timing advance can compensate for that magnetic field shift. Um, so it's uh, basically when a zero cross comes in, if there were no timing advance, you would wait for half a commutation cycle. I don't know if that makes any sense. Or basically half a half a step. And then you would change to the next step. So if you're on step one, a zero cross, which is halfway through um, one step or one phase, would come in. And you would try to time that um, from that point. And then commutate on the end of the step. And timing advance just increases that a little bit so that it's... Uh, hopefully more aligns with the magnetic field, which is going to be shifting. Because you're trying to pass, so the, uh, basically pass it off between every pole, correct? Yeah, it's, uh, well, pretty much. I mean, the, uh, the, the analogy is sort of, uh, you know, getting a, uh, a horse to chase a carrot, and then you're just moving it slightly further away each time the horse catches up to the carrot. Um, that's what you're doing with the magnetic, the electrical poles in order to get the magnetic poles to um, basically follow it around. So it's uh, timing advance is just a way of, uh, is, is a way of shifting the electrical um, electrical angle slightly to hopefully more align with the magnetic angle. If that, that doesn't make any sense at all, does it? That's like less clear than when we started now. So, and it, it's fine. I think people who are interested in the technical explanation will understand that. But so why would somebody... Well, yeah, move, hopefully. Yeah. Why would somebody move off of your standard 15 degrees of timing? Why, when would they advance the timing or decrease the time? Uh, well, I find that certain motors that um, need a really high acceleration rate or a really high acceleration is demanded of them. Um, sometimes a very uh, high timing of 22.5 degrees can help stop that motor from losing synchronization and having a trouble. Um, now it's, so when you're trying to time when to change phases on a brushless motor, you're only going by information that you have collected from the past event. So you know when the last zero cross was. So you can guess from that when you're going to make your next change to the next phase. But if somebody all of a sudden jammed the throttle up really high, then your next phase is going to come earlier than you expect it to if you're just basing it on the last one. Do you then need more so, timing? Yeah. And then timing advance can help uh, allow for that uh, for it to not lose synchronization when you're when you're really accelerating fast. And I find it helps with really tiny motors get to a very high RPM too. Uh, that might be due to the magnetic field um, sort of warping and and uh, shifting as it accelerate as it gets faster and faster. I don't really know too much about that, but it does seem to allow them to get to a, a higher RPM before they they have troubles. So, what about larger motors? Like even beyond, let's say, like a twenty eight oh seven, which is your typical large grown motor. I, I've heard increased timing in something like the L Heli helps with larger motors. You know, it's uh, it especially the high pole count motors. I mean, they they really are. Uh, if you've got a, a really high pole count, you're space between each electrical pole is really quite small, even for a big motor. And timing advance can, can definitely help too, because it doesn't take very much of a, of a field distortion to actually cause a big shift in timing when you've got a, a huge pole count on a, around a really big motor. 
But uh, I mean, uh, other than that, I, I mean, it's uh, it's something that some motors seem to do better with lower timing advances, and um, the the closer you get towards a neutral timing advance or zero, the uh, the quieter it, it tends to be too. You tend to have less audible artifacts, um, and it can be uh, it can be more efficient because you're you're getting closer to the ideal timing, but. Uh, uh, some motors just need to have a, a higher timing, especially if you're demanding a lot of fast changes from them. Uh, two last things I want to ask about for timing. So, what about Chris Rosser's test with Bial Haldi timings, seeing that the, the 15 to 16 degrees is more responsive? Yeah, that may be true. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, it might be more responsive, but if it desyncs, then... <laughs> It doesn't help. So sometimes you have to move up timing. Um, I haven't really put it to a fine test myself to see which one is. Uh, and I haven't seen the video, but I will check it out. Uh, one last thing. So BL Heli allows you to have up to 31 degrees of timing, and it allows a more granular uh, timing range. Why is it that it's not the case in AM32? Oh, I don't know. I said in thirty degree timing is basically as soon as a zero cross is detected, you uh, switch to the next phase. Um, I mean, it's it's open source. You could get rid of it. You can change the timing to whatever you like. It's just these are the values that um, are most uh, commonly used, and I think it covers most of the use cases. So it's, but okay. uh, yeah, we could definitely move up to thirty degree timing in the future. It's it's. I mean. I just went with four numbers and four different timing levels for now. Okay, I, I was just curious compared to that. 